What's happening, guys? Welcome to another rendition of Fix Your Form. I am Salam Mike. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, smash the thumbs up, turn on notifications so you're not missing a video, and let's get after it. This is the series where I take your form, viewers, subscribers, the family, and try to help you guys out. <clears throat> My man right here, in the slow-mo, it looks pretty decent. In the fast-mo, you're jerking on the bar. So what I want you to do is slow it down a little bit, Use the bar to gain tension in your back and hamstrings before pulling. Uh, a simple analogy is you're kind of going zero to 100 real quick, uh, as my boy Drizzy Drake says, where you can see there's slack in your arms, and then you're pulling and tugging on the bar. What we need to do is get slight tension on that bar. We don't want to slam on the gas pedal. We want to slowly accelerate. So we want to get as much slack in our arms out. So we want tension from our arms into the bar, Easy way to do that is kind of pulling our chest up and pushing our hips backwards, getting that teeter-totter falling back sensation, flexing your lats as much as you can, and then pulling that bar into your shins. Number two, uh, reason your hips are shooting up fast or too early, is that bar is too far away from you. Uh, you'll see a lot of people use some kind of guard or perhaps even uh, knee sleeves or something. We need to get that bar onto our shins and then onto our quads through the entire pull. I'm not sure if this is your buddy, if we're at the same gym, um, but we have very similar issues where you're going to zero to 100 real quick. Uh, one suggestion is slightly flatter shoes, uh, but then I recommend using the same cues I did with the other gentleman. You can see your erectors right there, and they're getting overbuilt because you're hinging on your low back, rather hinging on your hips. Breathing and bracing is something you'll have to practice over time, how to breathe into your stomach, sides, low back, and really brace. Flexing your lats, pulling that bar into you, but right there is a great position to see that your chest is too far over the bar. We want to push our hips backwards, not necessarily down, but backwards. Try to get more body weight behind the bar and then really flex our lats and pull that bar into our body. Yes, it can make some bloody shins. Yes, it can cause some lat cramps, uh, but overall, that's what getting tight means. Everyone at every powerlifting meet, every gym, everywhere is always screaming, get tight, get tight, make sure you're tight, big breath, this and that. But what does that mean? In the deadlift, the two main things we're trying to do is keep a flat back and flex our lats. The way to do that is the breathing and bracing, as I mentioned, and then pulling that bar into our body. I'm trying to bend that bar, especially with the conventional, it works very well. Think about bending that bar around our shins, literally pulling it into your legs the entire time. My man right here, looks like we got some big weight. I like the garage gym setup. He's got the nice wood floor for the treadmill. He's got all the specialty bars in the background. Um, this pole actually seems pretty dang solid. You guys can see on this guy, this gentleman here, he gets a little bit more tension into the barbell before he just pulls. You can see right now he has a little bit of slack, then he tightens up his back, tightens up his arms, flexes lats, and then pulls. Everything right here, dude, looks pretty dang solid. The one thing I'd say is you might be able to get away with a slightly higher hip position. And although um, it may feel uncomfortable, what happens is your knees are getting in the way of the barbell being a straight bar path. And you're going to have to get, it's tipping you a little bit forward. Um, and it's also pushing the bar away just a hair. Uh, overall, it's really, really solid. I like that tricep flare at the bottom of the pole. Highly suggested for likes, views, and subscriptions is to flex your tricep in as many angles as you can. Uh, joking, but not joking. Hopefully you guys say, saw that Tosh.0 oh with that one guy with just the huge right tricep and he just flexes it on everything. He just does arms and motivational talks. I was kind of sad and disappointed in myself that I had never seen him uh, before watching that Tosh.0 oh episode that I'd never came across him on YouTube or Instagram. Highly recommended Tosh.0. Oh. I don't know why, but it cracks me up. Uh, here's a slightly different angle and you can kind of see those knees getting just a little bit too much in front of the bar for how you're built. So um, what I try to do is keep those shins a, a slightly more vertical and the way to do that is just a slightly higher hip position and then falling back a bit. Overall though, dude, really, really, really solid form if I do say so myself. It looks like you get that uh, over under with that tricep. I can't tell the grip. Uh, people ask about grip all the time. Over, under, or mixed grip is the most common. Uh, second most common is probably the hook. And then least common is the double over, just because it will limit most people's grip. Yeah, you see at your knees there, you still have so much body weight in front of the bar. Uh, and over time, under heavier and heavier loads, that's just going to get so difficult to lock out. Right there, your chest is still so forward. You have a little bit longer torso. Over time, uh, I might try to experiment with the sumo, just based on how you're built. It may help. Uh, but a higher hip position hopefully will allow you to get more body weight behind that bar when the bar is at your knees. Uh, obviously, even this load here, um, but maximal loads, if your body weight is too far in front of the bar or on top of the bar when you're at your knees, 
the load's going to win. It's going to pull you back down. Uh, happens often. So weight falling back. Uh, I've done many a video on it, but kind of that teeter-totter action where I'm using that barbell basically to counterbalance my own weight holding me up. Uh, and you're going to fall backwards, pushing your hips, not down, but back towards like that gray wall uh, in this gentleman's case. One, it'll load your hamstrings and glutes, getting some tension there and obviously uh, stimulation to grow them. Dang, we've got so many angles. This dude's got beard angles. Yeah, your knees are just coming too far forward. So when people think about dropping their hips, which is a common cue in, in powerlifting or deadlifts conventional especially, people say, drop your hips, lower your hips. People lower their hips and they'll curl their uh, pelvis underneath them, rounding their low back and jam their knees forward. Um, in some cases, if you have really long arms and a tiny torso, this may not make a difference. Uh, but in the majority of cases, with the majority of the way most of us human beings, homo sapiens, are built, uh, it's going to jack us up. Oh, you don't got the over under. You got the hook grip. I appreciate that. I just tried a hook grip today with 315 and I wanted to cry. So another thing with the hook grip, not only do we want to bend that bar around our legs, but we want to get those elbows pointing backwards, causing some torque in the shoulders. I feel like we've watched this guy deadlift uh, 400 pounds, at least 20 reps. He must be exhausted. Uh, overall, really, really, really solid work. As I said, form is, you know, 85% there. Just a couple tweaks to really clean it up. On to this next gentleman. Looks like we've got a, a university gym. I'm digging Where are you at? Is it Stanford? What's that S? Dude, we got a long torso. You can see right there, just as he tried to set up, dude's, poor dude's not made to deadlift. Oh, is it Ohio State? Are we in the O? Are we in the Buckeyes? Dude, overall, really, really good. Uh, so I suggest everyone uses flat shoes. It's just going to be better for uh, the majority of people, both squatting and deadlifting. The less you have to balance on some kind of cushion, the better off you're going to be. Overall, man, it looks like your torso is insanely long. Maybe it's the angle, uh, but I think your torso is insanely long. And so considering that, uh, your pull is really freaking good. So some flatter shoes, you can see you flex your lats pretty good. You try to brace. You get a little curvature in the uh, spine on the pull. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, and then again, after maybe two or three years of solid foundational pull and conventional, um, for you, my friend, I may just experiment with the sumo. Uh, if you have some mobility in your hips, you might be able to get a little bit more upright um, and get a little bit better leverage with the sumo considering that poor torso of yours is insanely long. Uh, you can see the cushion on your shoes is wobbling you around. Your toes are coming up. Your toes are coming down. We want our entire foot in the squat and the deadlift to constantly have contact with the ground and be planted. I think about a flat foot. I think about really flattening it out and grabbing the ground with my entire foot. Uh, my toes, the ball of my foot, the side of my foot, and the heel all planted hard into the ground and then pressing evenly into the ground. Uh, here's a slightly different angle. If you guys do want to send it in uh, and be a part of this series, it's ask Mike, M I K K E, at gmail.com. Give me 70% of your one rep max for three reps, uh, preferably from the front and the side or the back and the side. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, any level uh, of experience is welcome. My man, it actually looks really good. You see how his, his hips have to start a little bit higher. The shorter your arms, the longer your legs, and the longer your torso is, the higher your hips position is going to look like at the starting of the conventional deadlift. If you have a tiny torso, long arms, and short little stubby legs, you'll be able to get your hips insanely low um, just based on bar path and what's optimal for a straight flat back position. The flat back position uh, will not only allow us to stay safe and uh, have a nice long career in the gym lifting weights and getting stronger, uh, but it will also allow us to lift properly, uh, activating the correct muscles and building the right muscles we want, the hamstrings, the glutes, our erectors a little bit, our back, all the way up to our traps, our lats but also allow us to lift the most amount of weight by allowing us to lock out. Uh, if you have a curvature in your spine, you got that round spine, that snap your shit up spine uh, throughout your entire lift, especially at the starting position, it's going to be very difficult. Um, see how his shins are no, almost nearly vertical at the start? That's going to, again, depend on how you're built. Um, that's going to be the slight factor that's different. Conventional deadlift, there's rules. Sumo deadlift, there's rules. Everyone's going to have to... Um, follow some simple rules, but everyone's going to look slightly different. We are this, we are not the snowflakes you think you are. You're not as special as you think or unique as your mama told you, um, but there are going to be slight differences person to person. Overall, really, really solid. I saw he kicked off the sneakers, decided to go with the flats, um, and it looks a little better. You can see his feet, if you guys paid a close attention like my eagle eyes, uh, you can see that his feet are more well planted here, not wobbling at the lockout or near his knees, where in the sneakers, his toe was coming up, his legs were going in and out a little bit. As you 
was trying to find balance on top of some cushioned shoes, like running, training, basketball shoes, supposed to try to absorb some of that contact as you're running or jumping. But when we're lifting, we want to be as planted and as stiff <laughs> stiff as we can. And that's going to be hopefully a flat shoe. Going shoeless, I get a question a lot, is going uh, with no shoes in lifting okay? I'd say going shoeless uh, or barefoot socks or something in the gym is as co okay as the obvious factors. You know, if you have no protection on your feet, there's heavy obst obstacles around. There's steps, there's metal, there's plates, there's bars. You can you can jack your stuff up pretty dang good. Um, and then obviously there's different rules at different gyms. The other thing I would uh, be a little bit um, weary of is just that even this gentleman right here, you're lifting on wood sometimes. Platforms are, are often wood for weightlifting combination with powerlifting. Uh, and socks obviously can be a little slippery and that causes some danger. So I personally prefer to wear something flat. It makes me feel a little bit safer to see people doing that as well. Um, but it's your life, man. Live your life how you want to. On to the next gentleman. Got the Hulk green outfit on, ready to smash some freaking plates. <laughs> Setup looks so good right now. I have a feeling this guy's going to be a pretty decent puller. Let's see what we got. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. So it looks like you have a hair ramping. Uh, again, what I see is everyone's trying to get their hips maybe a little too low. And as this gentleman, you try to get your hips too low, uh, you're pulling those hips underneath you and knees forward, which isn't necessarily wrong. But I think for the majority of people, it's not optimal because then you end up pulling and yanking on the bar. And if you're yanking on the bar then you're going to get pushed out of position come heavier loads. You'll be able to get a certain amount there, but uh, if there's not, if there's slack in your arms and your hips are low, there's no tension in your hamstrings and you crank on that bar, your hips are going to shoot up and you're going to end up missing weights that you should technically be making. Plus, again, going back to that rant of what muscles we should be working, we got to be building those hamstrings with the conventional deadlift, not only to help our squat uh, and to have proper motor pattern, but again, to lift the most amount of weight. So the ramping, uh, basically what it is, is once you get to your knees, some people will drive their knees forward again and really pull that weight and kind of ramp it up their thigh and power lifting that is a red light that is a bad lift um, and this gentleman uh, just in the slow-mo you can see it a hair it's just a bad habit to have uh, again if you have tension in your hamstrings what we want to do is hinge at the hips almost like a crane or something and that will prevent that ramping also getting your body weight falling back will help uh, all these cues and factors will help from the chance of ramping or any kind of illegal quote unquote lift. Um, another thing I could see from this angle, which is really, really good, uh, is you could move your grip in a little bit. When I'm pulling conventional or when one pulls conventional, what I've tried to do is limit the range of motion as much as we can. So I try to get my arms as close to your legs as you can. If there's a gap in there, you're gonna be lifting the weight further than necessary. Uh, and then it's also going to be a little bit harder to flex your back. So I, I like to uh, almost, as I'm grabbing the bar, literally touch my thighs and calves all the way down. One, because I have nice thighs and calves and I like to touch myself. Uh, excuse me? Uh, but two, uh, you can be right on the outside of that bar. It will allow you to flex your back and keep everything in line. So my friend, we want those hips slightly higher. We want to fall back. Again, this is a very common theme we're seeing with the deadlift. Is just that we want to get more tension in the hamstrings, more uh, get the slack out of our entire system from the barbell to our arms to our back to our hamstrings into the ground and then begin to pull from there if you guys enjoy the video please do me a favor give it a thumbs up share with your friends subscribe to this channel head down chin up my friends appreciate you another video coming in a couple days